Okay, so today what we want to do is talk about the normal model. All right, and so um, the the normal model has some very specific properties associated with it. One, it is symmetric. The mean, median, and mode are all the same value. Um, this makes it unimodal, so it has basically just one um, hump, and it has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So this could be considered the standard normal model when the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. And this allows us to it to have some very nice properties and some things that we can um, talk about. So here is a picture of the normal model, right? So here's my mean of zero and my standard deviation of one. So this is reaching out one, two, three standard deviations to the right and negative one, negative two, negative three standard deviations to the left. And so it has this very nice um, curve to it. And I'm gonna just kinda do a little compute. Um, and so right here, we call this an inflection point. You'll notice it's going down very steeply, but once it gets right here, it's almost kinda flat, and then it's going down less steeply. All right, and so this is an inflection point right here at negative one uh, and positive one. And so, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> if you are drawing the, the normal curve, you never want to have it touch the axis because it never actually touches the uh, horizontal axis here. And as you bring it up, when you get to that place where you feel like one is, that's where you want to kind of change the direction of your pencil to make the... Um, curve at the top. All right, so just a little hint for sketching the curve um, on your own. Now, we use this model a gr because it models a great deal of phenomenon we actually see in the world. Uh, so, if you were to look at the distribution of weights for a fish, or if you were to look at the um, distribution of the range that a whale might swim in a particular day. Um, if you were to look at the heights of, oh, the, um, the arm spans of a particular spider, what you would see is that it would actually follow this particular curve. Um, that most of the spiders, the mode, the mean, and the median of the spiders would have a particular value and we could subtract that value to get a mean of zero, right? And that a bunch of them are going to be pretty close to that mean. And then as we get further and further away, we're going to see less and less examples of that. Um, one example that you might be familiar with is that, let's say in North America, the average height of a male is 5 feet 10 inches tall. So 5 feet 10 inches is going to be the most frequent value. And then you're going to have from 5 foot 8 maybe to 6 feet is where a bunch of men are going to be. But we don't see a lot of 4 foot tall men, right? That would be far away from the mean. And we don't see a bunch of men 6 foot 8. So that would be far away from the mean, right? And so I get less and less data the further away I go, all right? And so it actually creates a ruler by which we can see if data are normal or extreme by where they are on the normal model. Now, this is because the total area under the curve is 1, all right? So if as I go back to my normal curve and I go as far to the left and as far to the right as I want, the area under the curve is 1. I completely shade this in every data value I have observed is here and so the area is one underneath the curve okay um, so if I have no values under that curve the value is zero alright so if I go back over here and I actually go from zero to zero and I'm gonna talk about what I'm doing here in just a second then you can see there's no area under the curve and if I have no values there's no area and so it's zero okay so this means <clears throat> um, if I have all values underneath the curve, that's a value of 1. And so probabilities actually take on the values from 0 to 1. 
oh, oh. So this means that the area shaded underneath the curve is the actual probability of observing data in that range of values. So the probability of seeing a male between negative 1 and 1 standard deviation is 0.6827, you know, if I round to four decimal places. The probability of seeing a male two or more standard deviations away becomes really, really small. And so if I actually go from two to, let's say, the tallest male that ever existed, and so what will happen is if I'm two or more standard deviations away, that's only about 2.3% of the population. There are a lot fewer observations in this range that are two or more away uh, from the average value. And so this would be spiders of extreme arm length. This would be fish of extreme weight. This would be a whale that traveled an extreme distance of more than two standard deviations away from its normal uh, swimming range. And so we would likely see this, not never, but just not very um, often. And so this is that probability. That's an actual probability of observing that data within a range of values. Now, why? Why a range of values, right? Well, it turns out that the probability of observing a single data value in the population is actually zero. All right? So for example, how likely is it to find a male five feet nine and one quarter inches tall as you go about your daily life? So if you picture this, you're walking around with this, <clears throat> excuse me, five foot nine and one quarter inches tall ruler. And anybody who is slightly shorter than that doesn't count. Anybody who's slightly taller than that doesn't count. You want somebody that is exactly this tall. Well, the chances of you finding that person are just not very likely. And so as I go to my normal calculator here, right, um, that's about a standard deviation of like maybe 0.75. And so if I'm looking for exactly that and no other value, just that one particular value, I'm going to get a probability of zero. The likelihood of finding that is basically none. Okay. So what we have to do, however, is if you look for a male that is between 5 feet 9 inches and 5 feet 10 inches, then your probability actually improves. Oh no, improves. So what would that look like? Well now instead of just looking at that one narrow range, I'm going to go from 5 foot 9 to 5 foot 10, and let's say that's between 0.7 and 0.8 standard deviations. You can see I've got this very thin line right here, this very narrow range, and that's about 3% of males that I would run into that would be that particular height. And so I'd be looking for a long time, but I wouldn't be looking forever, right? So that's a really important point. And then in fact, if you look for a male between 5 feet and 6 feet tall, you'll actually see a whole bunch of men in your daily life that will fit between those values. And so if I actually go, well, five feet is below um, the mean. And so let's say that's negative 1.5 standard deviations. Um, six feet is about one standard deviation. So if I compute that, men that are between five feet and six feet is actually going to be about 77 out of 100 men, or 77%, or a probability of 0 0.77. All right? And so... <clears throat> This brings us to the empirical rule. Now, I, I'm going to call it the empirical rule. A lot of books call it the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. There's a really good reason why we call it this that will be abundantly clear here in a second. This rule simply states that if you look at normally distributed data, data that is symmetric, unimodal, has a mean of 0, and a standard deviation of 1, um, then it's going to follow this particular rule that between one, negative one, and positive one standard deviation, you will observe 68% of your data, okay? And so if I go from negative one to positive one, like we saw, 
you will actually see that 68% of data is going to be in this particular range. And it's from one inflection point to the other. All right? If I go from between negative 2 and 2 standard deviations, we're actually going to see that 95% of the data is between those ranges. And so if I go from negative 2 to positive 2, you can see that the amount of shading goes way up, right? We've got all this extra area that's shaded in here. And so going from negative 2 to positive 2, I actually end up with approximately 95% of all the data. When you look in a table, or if you actually do like an inverse norm, um, the actual value for exactly 95% uh, is uh, 1.96. And you'll see that out to like five decimal places, that's going to be true. Um, and so this is what you'll see in a lot of books. Um, and this is what your calculator will give you. But we basically just round it, right, to negative 2 to 2. And that gets us pretty close, okay, um, to that 95% right there. And so that's why that's the 95% rule. And then between negative 3 and 3 standard deviations, we're going to see 99.7% of the data. So all you have to do is go 3 standard deviations, and you're going to see almost every single possible data value. Now, it'll never be all of it, because you can always have that super extreme um, that happens. <clears throat> and so the normal actually goes on forever and ever. But once you get out to 3, you'll notice that I have basically shaded in almost the whole graph, right? And I've got very little that's not shaded in. In fact, it's 99.7% shaded in. <clears throat> and so 99.7% of my observations are going to be um, in this range of values. And so to, to do something further away than that, right? It's going to be so, so tiny, right? One tenth of one percent of values are going to be between negative three and negative five standard deviations away. Um, you know, you're just not going to see something that often. And so th this allows statisticians to say that two standard deviations away are normal. That's going to be our normal range. That is, that 19 out of 20 observations are going to be in this particular range. And that's the statistician who created the rule of thumb in the beginning. Um, that's how, exactly how we put it. So anything further than that is going to be extreme. That's going to be 1 out of 20 observations, right? It's going to be in that little teeny bit past um, that. And so if I actually go from negative 3 to negative 2, let's say, you can see that only about 2.1% of all data values are going to be in that particular range. Or if I went out to like 300, let's say, only about two and a quarter of observations are going to be further away than negative 2. And then, of course, I can flip this around and I can look at the other tail. And what I'll have is about two and a quarter percent of data is going to be further away or higher than two standard deviations away from the mean, right? And so that's a pretty, pretty, pretty small, okay? Now, it's only a guideline, okay? And your discipline or your my professor may use other criteria. I have seen professors and books say that it's got to be more than three. I Rarely I see two and a half, but um, two is the gold standard, three is the second most common, and anything outside of that was probably super specific to your discipline and the type of data that you are um, collecting. Regardless of that, however, the higher the number of standard deviations away a data value is, the more rare its occurrence. The further away you get, um, the less likely it is. So this is our uh, video for today. I hope you really learned something about the normal model and the way it models probability of data, and that makes me happy.